Okay, everybody. Uh, today we're going to go through the examples of the nodes posted on module one. The first part of the uh, examples that I'm going to solve is uh, vector and vector space. So let's get started. So the first problem is uh, that f equals two, two, four, and one, and show the vectors three f and negative three f graphically in a three D space. Okay. So for this problem, what we want to do is um, we don't want to use this uh, numerical directly. We would like to represent the uh, vector in this way. f vector equals to 2i plus 4j plus k. So 2, 4, and 1 over here is the uh, magnitude of the vector in three directions. i, j, and k are actually the unit vector of those three magnitudes. So when we try to represent everything in three-dimensional uh, graphically, what we want to do is we draw three-dimension space, of course. And we would need to space by the direction as x, y, and z on each axis. So the basic thing we want to do is to draw two along this direction, 4 along y direction, and 1 along z direction. So when we are doing something like this, the vector is actually going to look like this in 3d direction. So this is going to be my f vector which is pretty straightforward. If you really want to uh, draw the 3f over here, it's nothing different. We just extend 3f equals 3 multiplied by 2i plus 4j plus k. That is going to give us 6i plus 12j plus 3k. So when we do this, what you want to do is to plot the direction 6 unit over here twelve unit along the y direction and three unit along z direction. So when we do this just like what we did earlier, we draw a three-dimensional box. Everything will start from zero and point to this direction. This is going to be my 3f. When you do this, you can easily found, find that this is actually the extension of the original vector f. Extend that three times, that is how we can draw the um, 3f on the three-dimensional space. That is our first problem. For example, 1.2, uh, we want to derive the equation of a line l through the points 1, negative 2, and 4. And the other point is three, uh, 6, 2, and negative 3. So when we are solving this problem, uh, we need to think in this way. This is a vector, which means it doesn't matter what the magnitude you're dealing with. It always points to the same direction. So if we can find two vectors along these directions, start from the same point, we should be able to find out the equations represent the three directions. So what I mean is, when we have vector it is endpoint minus start point. In this example, obviously, this one over here is my start point. So when we say we everything remains the same uh, vector, it means that I can define any 
endpoint I want to, which means along x direction, I minus the starting point, which is x minus 1. And this is along my i direction. For the y direction, it is going to be y minus negative 2 along j direction. Along z direction, it is going to be z minus 4 k. That is the vector that I start from any point along this line with x, y, and z as the variables. So this also means that we're going to have the same vector 6, which is my endpoint over here, minus 1 i plus 2 minus negative 2 j plus negative 3 minus 4 k. Okay, you might raise a question. So, how do I define those two are the same? If they are the same, it means that x, y, and z must be 6, 2, and negative 3. So, we need to uh, modify the vector in the latter part over here with a coefficient. Normally, we will use t to represent this. So when you minus t, the endpoint can actually everywhere because this part over here now defines just the direction. This part can be any point we have on the three-dimensional space as long as it's along the same direction. So when we have something like this, Let's solve this part first. It is going to be 5t i plus 4t j minus 7t k. That is something we have right now. And you might notice that this part needs to be equals to this one. The second part over here needs to be over here. The third part over here is going to be the same amount over here. Which these two three separate equations, that is x minus 1 equals to 5t, y plus 2 equals to 4t, z minus 4 equals to negative 7t. Those three equations are going to give us something that x equals to 1 plus 5t, y equals to negative 2 plus 4t, z equals to 4 minus 7t. Those three equations are our answers. That ends our second example. For the third example, we're dealing with the product and the angle between two vectors. So to solve this problem, this is actually pretty straightforward because after you read your notes, you're going to find out for that product and uh, the de definition of angles is just these two a single uh, formula which is cosine theta equals to f dot g the denominator over here is the product of the two norms so in this case we would need to do uh, two separate calculations before we can start to find the angle between those two vectors. The first one we want to do is f dot g. If you put everything in equation, you're going to find this is something I'm going to have, right? So when we have this equation, i dot i, j dot j, k dot k, and everything convert from vectors into magnitudes. We no longer have vector symbols included 
after this calculation. So if we deal with the x direction or i part is actually negative 1 multiplied by 0 because this part over here is actually 0i. The second one over here is going to be 3 dot 2 plus 1 dot negative 4. So I just take the components along each direction and multiply them together then and then add them together. So the answer of those two dot product is actually uh, I think it's two. That is the first part. For the second part we need to solve is the norm of f. This, this also follows a specific formula. That is going to be negative 1 square plus 3 square plus 1 square. And take the square root of this one, which is going to give us square root of 11. For the g, the norm of g is similar. It's 0 square, which means that we do not have any component along i direction, plus 2 square plus 4 square. After we do this, we know this is square root of 20. So we got our dot product. We got our two norms. So put back into this equation, our cosine theta is going to be 2 over square root of 11 multiplied by square root of 20 or 2 over square root of 220. Therefore, theta is going to be r cosine 2 over 220. If you use your calculator to find out the answer, you're going to find the angle actually is 82.25 degree. Or if you prefer to use radians, this is going to be um, 1.436 radians. And those two, either one, is going to be our answers. Okay. Let's move to another example. This one over here is the dot product of two vectors. You can use formula to come up with everything you want to do. Basically, when we have two vector cross product together, we put that as a matrix point. That means that on the first row, we have the vectors of i, j, and k. The second row is going to be important because the order cannot be switched. If we say it's going to be f cross product g, the second row must be f vector, the third row must be g vector. If you swap the position of those two vectors, the direction of the result is going to be in the opposite direction, which means every component is going to have a negative sign in front of it. So since we have f and g defined over here, just put the number into this matrix. 1, 2, negative 3 as a first uh, as a second row, negative 2, 1, and 4 as a third row. So you can either use formula or you have learned how to calculate this uh, in other math course, you can just use them. <coughs> but we can just use 2, negative 3, <coughs> excuse me, 1 and 4. This is my i part. For the j part, it is going to be 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 4. This is my j. Plus 1, negative 2, 2, 1. And this becomes positive again. And this is my k. So if you solve this one, we just come up with a determinant of each uh, uh, matrix 
So this one over here is going to be 8 minus negative 3. So it's going to be 11 i. For the second part, this is going to be 4 minus um, 6. So with the negative sign in front of it, we actually got this one. For the third part over here, it's going to be 1 minus negative 4. So it's going to be 5. This is going to be my answer. Okay. Okay, example 1.5. So in this example, we're going to talk about the area of two vectors. From the problem statement, we're going to find the area, uh, both which, which include uh, two vectors, uh, both of them it starts from 0, 1, and negative 2, which is this one. And this one. Okay, let me change my color of my pen to black. Okay, so we first try to define two vectors. Of course, we need to have n minus start so we're going to have 1 minus 0 i plus 2 minus 1 j plus 2 minus negative 2 k which is going to give us 1 i plus 1 j plus 4k. For the g vector, we are having 1 minus 0i plus 4 minus 1j plus 1 minus negative 2k. So what we have is going to be 1i plus j plus, uh, no, I'm sorry, 3j and 3k. So we want to find the area between uh, those two vectors. So if you define everything in three-dimensional space. Let's say this is my x, this is my y, this is my z. So we are having our vectors start from 0, 1, and negative 2, which is starting from here. And the second point is going to be 1, 2, and 2 which is about here. So we are actually drawing the vector. That is my f vector. For z, uh, for g vector, it is going to be 1, 4, and 1. So it's about over here. So this is g. What we're trying to do is to find the area. Let me change my color again so we have better visualize what's going on over here. Let's change this to light. So what we're trying to do is we try to find the area of this region. So we got f vector, we got g vector. The next thing is that we need to find out what is the vec uh, area between those two uh, vectors. So what we can do is first we will need to do f cross product g. Just like what we do in the previous, previous example, we got i, j, and k 
as the first row. The second row is going to be 1, 1, 4. Third row is going to be 1, 3, and 3. So when we do something like this, it is going to be 1, 3, 4, 3, I, which include those four items. The second one is going to be 1, 1, 4, 3, J. The third item is going to be 1, 1, 1, 3, K. So if you do your calculation, you should find out the vector becomes, the cross product becomes negative 9I plus 1J plus 2K. Okay, nothing fancy, we just follow the formula. On the other hand, if we try to find the uh, area, then it is going to be the norm of this result, which means we're going to have this one. So if we do the calculation, we got square root of 86. Since we do not space by any uh, unit of the direction, so we can just leave the answer like this. And that is how we calculate for the area between two vectors. The next example we're going to do is uh, find the volume of three-dimensional object. So this is similar. We have one corner defined at this position, and we are trying to identify the uh, volume created by three vectors. So if you want to, we can first draw our three-dimensional objects. Over here, we have y, x, y, and z. And we have well, negative 1, 2, and 2. So I think three dimensional wise. This is my first point. And again, we are drawing the vectors. So let me change my color again. To red. Okay. So we are going to have the second point zero. 1 and 1. So it is going to be over here. Let's name this one as my F. For the G, it is going to be negative 4, negative 1, 2, 3, and 4. 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is around this area and it's going to be 8 2 so it will be somewhere over here so if you draw a vector this is going to be G for the Z vector is going to be negative 3 which is over here uh, negative 2 Over here, and oh no, negative two somewhere here. So and it's going to be four. So it's going to be somewhere over here. So this is going to be my let's say this is edge. So when we are doing something like this. What we're trying to find out the volume, it maybe look like this. So this is the volume 
that we try to find out the number. So when we have something like this, what we're trying to do is to identify the vectors. This point over here is my star point. So f vector is going to be 0 minus negative 1 i plus 1 minus 2 j plus 1 minus 2 k or this one is going to give us i minus j plus uh, sorry minus k for the g vector it is going to be um, negative 4 minus negative 1 i plus 6 minus 2 j plus a minus 2 k or it is going to be negative 3i plus 4j plus 6k. For the edge vector, you have negative 3 minus negative 1 i, of course, plus negative 2 minus 2 j plus 4 minus 2 k so when you do this one you have negative 2 i minus 4 j plus 2 k so we got all our three vectors uh, calculated next step is just use the formula to solve for the answers. So the formula gives us the volume is going to be h dot f cos product g. You can swap the uh, vectors over here. You can say f dot h cos product g or anything. It doesn't matter because they should be the same. So when we do something like this, we are solving f cos product g first. That is going to be i, j, k. Put the vectors in this equation, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And the second part is going to be negative 3, 4, and 6. So we're going to have the answer equals to negative 2i, negative 3j, plus k. So this is the cross product of f and g. The next one is going to be h dot. The result of this product, which means we're going to have negative 2i, negative 4j, plus 2k dot negative 2i negative 3j plus k so if you do this you're going to find it is going to be a uh, negative 2 negative 2 plus negative 4 negative 3 plus 2 multiplied by 1 the answer is going to be 18 again we do not space by any unit of this uh, specific example. So you don't need to have unit after your calculation. The answer is going to be 18. So those are the six examples we have in our notes. Uh, go through those problems and you need to solve one of the homework after uh, the next set of video.